Hi there everyone. Today is a special day. I have had lots of requests for this one. It's time to look in detail at the Impulse RC Apex. We're going to look at some black box logs. We're going to look at the frame resonance analysis. And then we're going to try and answer the question, what is the unicorn magic that makes the Apex so good to fly? I think I know the answer, but you'll have to wait to the end of the video to find out. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are, looking at the roll axis from the black box log of the Impulse RC Apex. And I mean, this is just an exceptionally good spectrograph. You can see that there's no big red spikes anywhere in the whole frequency spectrum once you, once you get away from obviously the very low frequencies, which is real movement of the quadcopter that, that we want to be picking up. There is a tiny little resonant peak here. Um, if I were to increase the gain on the plot, you would see it more clearly. Uh, you can see it a little more on the on the yaw axis, but there's a little resonant mode here at 150 hertz. There's a cross-coupled resonant mode from the pitch axis here at 230 hertz. And then there's another resonant mode at 400 hertz that again is almost impossible to see at this zoom level so it's really just exceptionally good performance from the apex here and the waterfall plot you know is even with the gain turned up really high you you really can't see much in the way of resonant anywhere in the plot so it's it's a really impressive performance and certainly much better than any of the frames we've looked at before if we look at some of the mode shapes from the roll axis, we can see that 150 hertz mode. That's this typical alternating mode where the arms move up and down that you've seen uh, in lots of my other videos. It pretty much appears on every frame that I've looked at. There's also a second roll mode at 284 hertz. Now I couldn't find hardly any evidence of this in the spectrograph from the black box log. That really indicates that the frame is doing really, really well at not letting this resonant mode, which we know does exist because we can see it here, from affecting the gyro at all. If we look now at the pitch axis, we can see that there's a little bit more going on. There's quite a clear resonant mode at 230 hertz. And this is this mode that was coupling onto the, the roll axis and we could see that. There's also a smaller but still visible resonant mode at just about 400 hertz. It's perhaps more visible on the waterfall plot, but it's definitely there. If we look now at the mode shapes on the pitch axis, this mode shape is, is not particularly visible, but the reason that I include it is because I think it contributes to making this second resonant mode more of a problem. There's definitely more energy being transferred into that mode as a result of having another mode at a very similar frequency. So this is something that in any frame design we want to avoid. We want to try and separate out the frequencies of each resonant mode so that they don't feed off each other, they don't transfer energy between each other, and in that way build and amplify noise from the motors more. There's a third resonant mode Again, it's on pitch, it's at a higher frequency. It's also being quite well attenuated, but we can still see that mode being picked out in the spectrograph. So I include it here, but really it's not affecting the gyro that much at all. You could see it was only a very, very small peak. Uh, wouldn't be affecting flight performance at all, particularly not up at a high frequency like 400 hertz. Any sort of filtering that you have any low pass filtering, even the hardware low pass filter in the gyro would be, would be attenuating that out of existence very quickly. If we look now at the yaw axis, we can see a little bit more evidence of this peak at 145 hertz. So that's quite interesting. Clearly, although it's not really coming out on either the pitch or the roll axis in a really visible way, you could see it a little bit on roll, but, but not so much on pitch. The fact that the flight controller is working the motors to control that vibration makes it appear in the yaw axis and that's that's something that we often see is that mode shapes in pitch and in roll couple onto the yaw axis and 
that can make them more visible. Um, it typically doesn't cause much of a problem. The your axis is less sensitive than the pitch and roll axis because there's a lot less authority on your because it's all about change of inertia of the motors rather than change of thrust of the props. And the thrust on the props is a much larger force that, that is exerted on the frame. So um, that's where you, you tend to see more problems with vibration is on pitch and roll. You can see there are some other cross-coupled modes that are appearing on your. Um, I haven't bothered to label them here, but you can you can see the one at 230 is appearing and the one at 400 is appearing. And um, there's also one at about 280 with that rolling mode that wasn't really visible on the roll axis, but you know you could potentially see that maybe there's something appearing there as well. But there's really nothing to worry about in this plot at all. It's all very, very low down very much in the green um, and won't be really affecting flight performance and won't need much if any filtering. So the Apex is performing really exceptionally well. Just up around 600 hertz you can also see that there's just a little bit of amplification and this coincides with the the kind of the key resonant mode on your. This is at such a high frequency that it's not really something that we will need to worry about but you you can see how these mode shapes do make themselves visible in the in the spectrograph and if you do want to see much more extreme examples of resonant modes being clearly visible in black box logs and clearly having an impact on flight performance i'd really encourage you to go and watch some of my other analysis videos where i go into into some depth on resonant frequencies mode shapes and vibration performance of different frames. So now that we've looked at the black box logs and we've looked at the mode shapes, we have to ask ourselves, these mode shapes are pretty similar to the mode shapes that we have seen with other quads of a similar layout. They're occurring at not dissimilar frequencies. So why is the apex looking so much better on black box logs? And there is really just one reason for that, I believe, and that reason is damping. Now, damping is a measure of the rate of vibrational energy being lost to heat. As things vibrate, they lose energy to heat by a number of mechanisms. High damping factors reduce the amplification of noise. So a lot of damping reduces the amplification of noise by frame resonances. And it does this by encouraging, increasing the amount of energy being lost to heat from the vibrational mode. And if you think of a vibrational mode as a way to store energy, then noise from the motors is feeding energy into the vibrational mode and damping is causing energy to be lost from the vibrational mode. And if you've got a lot of energy being lost, you can't build up much energy in that vibrational mode. Now there are three sources of damping that we need to be aware of. The first one is material damping. So I've got a little image here of the little rubber grommets that you use to soft mount your flight controller and ESC and, and things like that. These little rubber grommets are a great example of material damping. So they're a soft rubber material and they have a very, very high material damping coefficient. That means that they're really lossy if you shake them and, or stretch them or move them in any way, you generate a lot of heat in that process and they don't ring, they don't resonate at all. An example of a material with a really low material damping coefficient um, would be something like the metal that you make a symbol out of. You know, you hit a symbol and it'll ring for a really long time and that's because that material has a very low damping coefficient. The second way in which systems can lose vibrational energy is through viscous damping and this is fluidic damping and this is where the movement of the material the vibration of the material causes air to move or causes liquid to move and by moving that liquid the liquid dissipates energy through viscous dissipation within itself and a great example of that are the shock absorbers on your car they have oil inside and as you go over a bump, the energy of that bump forces oil through the shock absorber and by forcing oil through that shock, through lots of tiny holes in that shock absorber, you dissipate loads and loads of energy through viscous damping. 
So that's the second mechanism. Now the apex frame is made of really similar materials to other quadcopter frames. It's carbon fiber, steel, aluminium. So we wouldn't expect the material damping to be any different for the apex than for any other frame. Similarly, we wouldn't expect the viscous damping to be any different because the frame is still flying in air. Air is the, the primary fluid and it's the same air that all other frames are flying through. So there's no difference in viscous damping to be expected. And so that leaves us with Coulomb damping, otherwise known as frictional damping. And this is where you dissipate energy by having surfaces rubbing over each other. And as those surfaces rub over each other, they create heat by friction. And that heat is vibrational energy being lost, being dissipated. Now it turns out for the Impulse RC Apex that Coulomb damping is really, really important, I believe, for its vibrational performance. Now, for those of you not familiar with the design of the Apex, I'm showing you here the bottom plate, the four arms, the keystone that sits in the middle. You can see that each arm has a through bolt that comes through the bottom plate, through the arm, and through the sandwich plate that sits on top of this assembly. And then also there is a press nut with another bolt that just goes through the bottom plate and into the arm and critically doesn't go through the sandwich plate. So why does this matter? Here are my terrible hand drawings to try and illustrate this point. In a traditional frame with through bolts, as the arm bends due to vibration, the top sandwich plate stretches, the bottom plate compresses, and the arm bends. So some parts of it are in tension, some in compression. But as you can see, because these bolts go all the way through both plates, they fix the position of the arm in place during that vibration. So there is very little movement of the top surface of the arm relative to the sandwich plate. Now let's look at the apex design. One through bolt, one bolt into a press nut. Now when this design bends due to vibration, the top surface of the arm is no longer tightly constrained against the top sandwich plate here. And in fact, as you can see in this little diagram that I've drawn, the top surface of the arm here is actually going to slide along the sandwich plate as it bends down and when it bends back up, you can see it's going to slide back the other way. And that sliding over this very short distance here is going to create friction, it's going to create rubbing, it's going to create heat, and that is going to dissipate vibrational energy. That is going to attenuate the vibrations of all of the resonant modes where the arm is vibrating up and down. And it just so happens that in quadcopter frames, the critical vibrational modes, most of them involve the arm bending up and down. So this, I believe, is the unicorn magic behind the apex frame. This single bolt going into a press nut in the arm that allows the top surface of the arm to slide relative to the sandwich plate. And that sliding creates friction and that friction dissipates vibrational energy. So now that we know this, can we answer the question why is the pitch axis on the apex worse than the roll axis? We should expect them both to be similar because both of the modes involve the arm flexing up and down in the same way. Well, the reason is due to the mass involved in that vibration. Both pitch and roll should have similar damping coefficients because they're dissipating energy in the same way by that sliding of the arm against the sandwich plate and of course by the material damping of the carbon fiber and other materials in the frame. But because the pitch axis has a lot more mass moving and a much larger moment of inertia on that axis, the damping factor, which is what determines the amplitude of vibration and the rate of energy loss from a particular mode, is lower. So we have the same damping coefficient but we have more mass, so the damping factor becomes lower. So that is why we see and should expect to see more amplification of vibration on the pitch axis than the roll axis for the Impulse RC Apex. All right, 
So now you understand the unicorn magic behind the Impulse RC Apex, this really excellent vibrational performance. I have one last question for you and I'd love to get your answer down in the comments section. Do you think that that design was intentional? Do you think that they, they put that press nut in there specifically to get the benefit of this Coulomb damping? Or did they do it for another reason? Maybe to avoid having press nuts directly underneath the flight control stack. I have my suspicions, uh, but I'd love to get your thoughts on it as well. In my next video, I'm going to be looking in detail at uh, a different topic, actually. I'm be looking at motors, the motors that we use on our mini quads. And I'm going to be busting some myths about motor selection and motor design. If you don't want to miss that, please like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope that you felt that you learned something about the Impulse RC Apex. If you'd like to support me to create more videos like this, I do have a Patreon and the link is down in the video description. With that said, until next time, I wish you all very happy flying.